Hey everyone, it's Ventone. His Dark Materials Season 2 Episode 2 has just aired on the BBC. It's time for my review. As always, just be careful for our spoilers from this episode and for Episode 1 if you haven't seen it yet, as Season 2 hasn't aired yet on HBO Max. They get Episode 1 tomorrow and we're already on Episode 2. But yeah, let's talk about it. So this episode, I've got very mixed feelings. There was a lot of good, a lot of great, but also some bad. And it kind of starts off pretty confusing. Remember back to the last episode. Will goes out at night and he's in some sort of trance. He's going towards the tower and a spectre appears behind him. And then the episode cuts off. That's the big ending for episode one. A big cliffhanger. What's the spectre going to do? Is it going to harm Will? Remember, we were told by Angelica in episode one that spectres harm adults. They don't harm children and children can't see them. But we were told that Will is close to the change. He's close to becoming a man. So people were starting to think, maybe the spectre might see him, maybe it might attack him. But there was no payoff whatsoever. It completely skipped that. And the opening scene for this episode was in the morning, when Will and Lyra are planning their trip to Will's Oxford. The spectre was even in the recap, but no payoff whatsoever. Not sure why that was in there. Probably just to have a big finale for the first episode. A big ending scene, and to show off the spectres. But yeah, we're going back to Will's world now. We're going to his Oxford. It does have some similarities to Lyra's Oxford, but it's also very, very different. Jordan College does not exist, and that hurt her heart. But what does exist in her world, and Will's world, is the Botanical Gardens, and that bench. If you don't know anything about the bench, don't worry, I won't spoil it, but remember it. Remember the bench. And their relationship together is the probably the biggest part of this story, in my opinion, and one of the best. They do have their own agendas, Right now, Lyra is really just trying to find out about Dust, but the Leafyometer has told her she needs to help Will find out about his dad. And Will's still unsure, you know, he doesn't really trust anyone, but he's starting to trust Lyra, and he's starting to care more and more about her. The police are looking for him, and he risked his bacon for her. You know, they agreed to meet at 5 o'clock, under the tower, whatever it was, and the police are looking for Will. He could have run back off the Chittagatsi and left Lyra, but he chose not to. He was mad at her for being late, and like you say, he doesn't 100% trust her yet, but yeah, we're getting there. So probably the most important part of this episode was the introduction of Mary Malone. I've always felt this adaptation has been good so far, some messes, but mostly hits. I think the casting is one of the strongest points of the show, and Mary Malone was perfect. Kind of feels straight from the book. I understand a lot of people might be confused and maybe bored with her and Lyra scenes though, you know, with dark matter, dust, and all the shadow particles. You know, they're kind of expecting a fantasy world with polar bears and aeronauts and magical demons and all this. But then we're talking about science, about dark matter. It kind of drags on and you can kind of lose interest if you're not really invested in the story. But it's a big deal and it's so important you have to pay attention. There's still lots more to be revealed about dust. But basically, dust is a conscious elementary particle. It's the same thing as shadow particles, dark matter, and the Magisterium believe it's original sin. There's still a lot of mystery, but when Lyra asks the Leafyometer, it's pretty much the same as Mary's computer of the cave. I remember that scene in the books, and it plays out pretty much the same, I believe. It's been a while, but I think it's pretty much the same. It does kind of drag on and throw a lot of information at you, but it's important. These early scenes in The Subtle Knife and Will's Oxford are crucial to the story. But this episode, uh, there's a lot of scenes that are not. I enjoy some of the changes and some of the differences from the books. Some of them are just enjoyable and some of them expand the story even more. But I wasn't a fan of Will's grandparents. That's an addition that I don't really understand. I kind of feel that it was nothing more than let's just give Will something to do whilst Lyra's busy with Mary Malone. It was kind of unnecessary. They're very unlikable, which they're meant to be. But it kind of slows the episode down and it's not interesting. Sorry. I enjoyed Will's side story with him going to check on his mother and all that, but the grandparents, not a fan of that, sorry. It slows the episode right down, and this episode is slow pace at the best of times. Putting in annoying grandparents doesn't help. So yeah, I'm going to be more critical here. The Magisterium, I didn't enjoy that much either, and there's a lot of Magisterium in this episode. And I understand why, because they're one of the main forces working against Lyra. They're kind of the main bad guys at the moment. But they're kind of boring and it drags on. But what I do like is Mrs. Coulter. Massive fan of Ruth Wilson. I love seeing her manipulate Father McPhail. 
she helped put him on the top job, but it was really just her way of getting what she wants. You know, she's done all this to help him, she could throw him under the bus, but what she really wants is to find Lyra. I could honestly watch her all day putting these dudes in their place. But I'm not a fan of Father McPhail, I think he had too much screen time this episode. And the Dr. Lanzelius scene, that was her miss as well. I think it was a decent addition, but as a peace envoy, I kind of felt that was dumb. Didn't really make sense. It was always going to end one way, wasn't it? And I feel bad for him because he's came all this way to try and make peace, and now he's got eight years hard labour with demon captivity. But yeah, what I will say is these scenes do add a lot of depth to Father McVale and the Magisterium, which of course is always going to help down the line. Adding more development to characters is always good, if done correctly and if it works. And I'm sure most of this, if not pretty much all of it, was made up for the show. And speaking of the Magisterium, Lord Boreal is back. And like pretty much everyone in the Magisterium, or pretty much everyone in the entire series, they have their own agenda. He is part of the Magisterium, he's an ally, an acquaintance to Mrs. Coulter, but he's also working against her. He's seen Lyra in Will's world, he knows where she is, but he doesn't tell Mrs. Coulter. He even asks Mrs. Coulter if Lyra's demon has sailed yet. He knows that Lyra is Mrs. Coulter's pretty much only weakness. Just go back to when Father Graves mentions the witches giving up their children, what sort of mother would send their child away. That really bothered Mrs. Coulter, because she done that. She got rid of her child. So yeah, not a biggest fan of the Magisterium this episode, but it's always a positive getting Miss Coulter screen time and more development for her character. And like I've said pretty much in every episode review, I think she's the best character in the show. Ruth Wilson's perfect. We'll quickly talk about the witches now. Queen Rutascadi wants to fight. She was the one that killed the witch who was getting tortured by Miss Coulter before she could reveal the prophecy about Lyra. She seems to be the action queen. She wants to be the one that gets it done. But they both want to protect Lyra and the prophecy, both her and Serafina Pecola. But they have very different approaches. But now the Magisterium's bombed the lakes, I think all nine clans are going to be united now. I do enjoy the witches, especially in the books. I love Serafina Pecola. But I kind of feel the witches are portrayed inconsistently. You've got great actresses playing them, and they are doing an amazing job. But I think at times they're very inconsistent. At times they're incredibly overpowered, much so than the books. But then at other times they're wasted and they just don't do much. They're nothing more than just exposition. They just stood there while the Magisterium bombed the lakes. But in earlier episodes they've seen how powerful they are. It was kind of strange that they just stood there. Obviously the Magisterium are in their airships, which are very dangerous, very powerful, but so are the witches. And this is all going to lead to war anyway. Not sure why they just stood there. But I get it. I understand why they've done it in terms of the story. It's to show the horror about what the Magisterium has done, give the witches another motive to unite and fight against them. But yeah, I think that's about it. Overall, I think it's a decent episode, but an incredibly important one. A lot of setup. now you have Mary Malone on the show, and of course the shadow particles and dust getting more explanation. Lord Boreal's back and he's seen Lyra. Like I've said several times, The Subtle Knife is my favourite book in the series, and the Lord Boreal side story is really good, it's one of my favourites. But like I said, no spoilers. I remember the first time I read it, I was on the edge of my seat, and I'm looking forward to that to come on the show. And more Mrs. Coulter, as always. And obviously this episode, all the big stars were missing. No Lee Scoresby this episode, no James McAvoy as Lord Asriel again. Like I've said several times, we're only getting seven episodes this season. They had to scrap a Lord Asriel focus episode, because they couldn't finish filming. Not sure if he's going to be in this season at all. He's mentioned every five minutes, but just like in the book, I think he's missing. Andrew Scott as John Parry hasn't appeared yet, but on the plus side, Yorick's back next week, and so is Lee. But yeah, I think that's it. Make sure you let me know your thoughts on this episode. I don't think it's one of them episodes you're going to go back and rewatch on its own, but it's crucial to the story. Not as good as episode one, but I enjoyed it, and I'm always hyped for his dark materials. Episode one's dropping on HBO Max tomorrow night. I will leave a link to my review for that. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't checked out these videos, here they are, and I'll see you in the next one.